Welcome to Knitting Daily. I'm your host, Uni Chang. On today's episode, we're diving into short row knitting. We'll begin with a tutorial on three ways to wrap your short rows. Next, on today's Accessorize Me segment, Shay meets up with Kristen to talk about the broomstick crocheted hat. This fun hat is easy to crochet and takes just one ball of yarn. Kristen will show you how to get started to add this great accessory to your wardrobe. Then on Yarn Spotlight, I'll join yarn expert Clara Parks as we talk about washable wools, what yarns are actually washable, and what projects lend themselves to these yarns. And finally, I'll wrap up this short row episode with a quick tip on changing stepped bind offs to short rows. Let's get started. Come on in and take a look with me. Short rows in knitting are actually literally just rows that are shorter than the full width of the fabric. So you can see here that I've got a piece of fabric that curves to the left, and that's accomplished by inserting short rows all along the right side of the swatch. So I've got some progressively longer short rows, or you could think about them as progressively shorter short rows. The first one ends here, so you knit to here and go back. Then the second one ends here, so you knit to here and go back, and so on. And so repeating that over and over again shows that I've knitted this many rows of knitting on the right side of the work, while I've knitted only this many rows of knitting on the left side of the work. And short rows are great for any time that you want to add a little bit of extra width or length to a piece of knitted fabric. So they can take the place of increases for bust shaping. They can do things like on this sweater where I've got this great curved kind of bottom hem to it. Short rows are really useful in all cases where you want to uh, add a curve to your knitting or where one side of the knitting needs to be longer than the other. So let's take a look at a couple of different ways that this is done. So with short rows, the issue is always how do you prevent a gap from forming where that row is actually short, where it's actually knitted to and then turned. So I'll show you three different ways. Here I'm going to knit my first short row. The full width of my fabric is 24 stitches, but my short row is only six stitches. So I'm going to knit six stitches and that's my short row. It's shorter than the rest of the work. I'm going to turn my work, and then before I start knitting back, let me just make sure I have some yarn ready here. Before I start knitting back, I'm going to, my yarn is in the front facing toward me. I'm going to make a yarn over onto my right hand needle. So I knit continental and I hold the yarn in my left hand, so all I need to do is just swoop my needle into it from the top, behind the yarn from the top. But if you were knitting with your yarn in your right hand, all you would need to do is just move the yarn literally right over that right needle and then the rest of the the short row or the rest of the yarn over is formed when you wrap it all the way around. So now I'm going to keep knitting back. So I'm going to purl back to the beginning of my row. So this is only six stitches. And then when I turn my work you can see that I've got my six stitch short row and then this extra stitch here that was formed from that yarn over. So on the next row back, when we pass that short row, we're going to close it up. So I'm going to knit my first six stitches, and I've got this yarn over stitch right here. And all I need to do is just knit the next stitch on my needle and that yarn over together. So I'll show you that again. I knitted my first six, my first six stitches, and now this is my next real stitch. This is that yarn over and I'm just going to knit those two together. And you can see on the full fabric that it's pretty, it's not very noticeable. There is a slight bump in the fabric. And then on the wrong side or the suck or the stuck, the reverse stockinette stitch side, you can see where those yarn over stitches are worked into the rest of the fabric here, just as a slight bump. Now, if you wanted to insert a short row on the left side of the work, you would do it on the wrong side. So what you would do is you would purl six stitches and then close it up on your next purl row. The next way of working short rows is what might be the most familiar to you. You see this really often in knitting patterns where it directs for you to knit a certain number of stitches and then wrap and turn. So we're gonna do the same thing, knit six stitches, that's five, and then six. Now I'm gonna wrap my next stitch. I'm gonna bring my yarn to the front of the work just between the two needles. I'm going to slip the next stitch purl wise onto my right needle. I'm going to move the yarn again to the back of the work. I'm going to turn the work, and now I'm going to slip that stitch back to, to the right needle. So that seventh stitch never got worked. It's just been wrapped with the yarn. So I'm going to purl back here. And then you can see that there's no extra stitch, but we do have that, that little wrap sitting right at the base of the seventh stitch. So we're going to close this up by knitting our first six stitches. 
And then we need to unwrap that stitch or work the, the wrap together with the stitch. So the way that I'm gonna do that here is I'm gonna slip that stitch to the right needle again. I'm just gonna insert my left needle into that wrap and into the stitch on my right needle, move them both back to the left needle, and then just knit them together. And that wrap will pop toward the back. So I'll show you that again. I'll just get that set up here. I've got the wrap here, right around the base of my seventh stitch. I'm gonna slip to the right needle. I'm gonna insert my left needle up into the wrap and into my seventh stitch, slip them both back to the left needle, and then knit them together. And then you can continue on your way. Now the last method is a little refinement of the wrap and turn technique. It, it results in exactly the same action, but, it's, uh, but there's no actual wrap. So again, I'm gonna knit six stitches. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna turn the work. I'm not going to wrap that seventh stitch. But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna take a bobby pin and just slide it around the running yarn, just right up against the base of that stitch. I like using a bobby pin because you don't have to stop and actually open and close anything. So now I'm just gonna purl back as usual or work in my pattern stitch on the wrong side. Now this time when I go to close up my, my gap there, there's a little trick. So I'll knit six stitches. And now is when that bobby pin comes in handy. You'll see that this little loop that the bobby pin is hooked is almost exactly the same as a wrap, just freed from wrapping anything. I'm gonna insert my left needle up into that little loop of yarn. I'm gonna remove my bobby pin and then knit my seventh stitch or my next stitch and that wrap right together. And this I find has the cleanest look of all. You can see that, that there's very, very little evidence of where you wrapped. I'm gonna show you that again because I wanna show you a little variation. I'm gonna add a couple stitches here. So it's an eight stitch short row now. I'm going to turn the work, slide my bobby pin or marker or whatever you're using. And then instead of purling that first stitch and just purling as normal, I'm actually just gonna slip that first stitch purl wise with the yarn in front. Didn't work it at all. So I'm gonna purl back to the beginning. And then I'll just quit, quickly knit up to that point. And then it's exactly the same as we did before. So I've knitted all eight of my stitches. I'm gonna stick my left needle up into the loop that my bobby pin is holding, remove my bobby pin, and then knit the next stitch in that loop together. You can see that slipping that eighth stitch, not working it at all, has really drawn up the fabric and you get a very smooth line. It's almost invisible. So don't fear short rows. You've got four really easy ways to work them. Kristen and Shay will be up next.